Our next caller is Haley from London. Haley, how can we help you? Hey guys, thanks for having me on. Um, so basically, what I want to know is how can I effectively plan my own training programs? So through lockdown, I've had like programs made for me by my PT. Um, but when the gyms finally reopen here, I want to be able to go in there and just having made my own programs to follow. So I have just completed my personal training course, which I just did for my own benefit. So now I just want to put it to really good use. Um, so I suppose, how do I factor in workouts that help me reach my goals, which is like overall strength and building that, those glutes, but then I also don't want to overlook their least favorite training, which is upper body. No, no, really good question. And you can't know, wait to see you try and answer this, consider how nuanced this is. Going oh, so, so much. So here, you know, so here's something that's, uh, it's just the uh, inconvenient truth, I think, around exercise and workout programming. Certifications definitely can help. Um, unfortunately, workout programming is mainly uh, an experience thing. It really is. There's so many different moving parts into workouts. I'm sure you could put together a general routine that won't hurt you um, and that'll get you a lot of the way there. But to really take it to the next level, it's going to require a lot of experience. So here's the advice that I'm going to give you, Haley. I would suggest looking at other well-written programs by coaches and trainers. Um, so for example, the MAPS programs, great place to look. Maybe your Obviously, favorite trainers. We, <laughs> we created those. Uh, Mark Ripito has got some good uh, workout programs. I would look at strength coaches who train lots of athletes and work with lots of people and see how they're designing the workouts. Start following some of those pre-written workouts and then start listening to your body. Uh, workout programming really is uh, much more complicated, I think, than people can realize. Well, I think we can give – how about this, though? I mean, we could talk about uh, volume, like ideally what the studies say as far as how much volume per week, so how many sets that you should be doing per exercise. We can talk about uh, the prioritizing the, the big movements like compound lifts. So we could talk about frequency, what's ideal frequency. So there's some – there's some things that I feel like we can give her that that will help her move in that direction, although it is very yeah. Well, so studies mm. will show that r right around 12 sets total per body part per week is uh, where people tend to do the best. But again, these are general, right? It's based off of studies. You can be one of those people that does more volume and get better results, and you might be someone that needs a little bit less. But 12 is what the studies tend to point to. As far as frequency of training body parts is concerned, Anywhere between two to four times a week seems to be ideal for most people. But again, there's that huge individual uh, variance. Now, as far as training you know, body parts in areas that you don't want to train, well, that's just going to be uh, from discipline. That's going to be you making sure that you maintain balance um, with your workouts. But also be, you know, be okay with yourself. This is a learning process. It takes a while. The keys really are listening to your body gauging your progress, maybe even tracking your workouts. This is a good place to start tracking where you actually write down exercises, weight, sets, reps, and then maybe give yourself you know, some other scores like I felt really good or I, I felt like I was grinding through that workout. And then over time, you can start to learn your own body and start to really program best for yourself. And by the way, it's, uh, it's a whole nother ball game to program for other mm. people. But you didn't say you were going to become a trainer, so I wouldn't worry so much about that. Yeah. Just train yourself, listen to your body, look at your objective progress, and then use that as a metric to decide or determine what are the best exercises for you. Well, also speaking, uh, you know, to training the the body parts and the types of exercises you don't typically want to do. I mean, that's where you're going to see the most growth and change and transformation typically. And also to addressing a lot of the imbalances, um, you know, to, to make your program and more specific to you and more individualized. Uh, this is where we kind of steer people a little bit more towards assessments and really understanding, uh, you know, where you're at and, and, and what your status is currently in terms of like your joint health and also, you know, which muscles are responding, which ones are not responding. So, you know, putting a little more work in that direction is highly beneficial, especially when you're starting to draw things up. Well, I'm, I'm going to give you a more specific answer, but it's still generic, right? Because of the points the guys are bringing up right now. Uh, I would train three days a week. I would uh, do full body. 
I would train, I would do, like Sal said, 12 sets if per muscle group. So every day that you're training every muscle group, I'm only going to do about three sets, three to four sets of each exercise for that muscle group. I'm going to start with all the big compound lifts. So most workouts are going to start with either a squat, a deadlift, a bench, an overhead press. So start with your big motor movements and then work your way to kind of like the, uh, you know, auxiliary stuff like your arms, shoulders, lateral raises, tricep pushdowns. That'll be later in your workout. And that would be like a three-day a week program. That's just a good generic place to start. And then you could start teasing out things uh, as you go in. Like, oh, was that, you know, can my body handle more? Was that too much for my body? Should I back off? Is that too much compound lifts? lifts? My joints are hurting. Like, you know, there's a lot of variables that are going to come into play. I think that's a really good place to start for most people, which is very similar to the programming in MAPS Anabolic. And then you can kind of build off of that. Yeah. Haley, what's your exercise experience? Are you working out a lot right now? Are you pretty experienced? Yeah, so I do. Um, at the moment, strength training wise, I'm doing three times a week and I'm doing two lower body and one upper body. And then I also um, run quite a lot. So I run three times a week. Um, and then try and get my yoga in as well. Okay. Haley, do you have access to MAPS Anabolic? No, I did try to buy it, but my card doesn't work on your site. I tried to buy Anabolic and the glute one. Oh, I see. Okay, well, we'll send you MAPS Anabolic. So you're going to get access to that. Follow the, pro follow the program, modify it a little bit if you want, um, okay. and then see how you feel. It's a very, obviously, it's a, we, we consider it to be a well-written program that'll get you started on, you know, strength training programming for yourself. So start with that, see how you feel. You'll, you'll probably see really good results. Most people do. And then take it from there. Okay. And that's generally like focusing on full body each session. It yes. is. It is. And that's usually uh, how most people will do best is some kind of a full body based three day a week or so routine. Perfect. All Brilliant. right. Thanks so much for your advice. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your support. Well, thanks a lot. And have a good day. You too. You too. You too. Yeah, it's one of those things, uh, you know, writing, creating workouts for well, we wouldn't have a, for we, other would, people. we wouldn't have jobs. We wouldn't be doing yeah. this if it was easy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Let's be honest. If it was that easy that we could just like, hey, here you go. I and wonder if you can call in, you know, to to a doctor's show and just, you know, ask, you know, if you could just diagnose yourself. Yeah, I know. Exactly. I don't know. It's just, I mean, of course, that's silly, right? This is something that, like, a lot of people kind of know how to train, and it's, you know, there's there's a lot of simple programs out there you can kind of pull from. But yeah, I do feel passionate about what we do in terms of programming. It's a lot more sophisticated. It looks well, that's the so the idea of the, and I, we should have asked. I didn't we didn't think to ask her. Obviously, she doesn't own any maps in a ball. I'm guessing she hasn't been. Uh, a part of mind pump community that long because really the idea was you listen to the show and we we give you all these nuanced things that we're talking about in this this short segment then you have the the programs to complement everything that we talk about but we've since day one encouraged people to modify and change the workout based all the information that we yeah. present on the show like the idea is that you listen to the sh all the episodes where we talk about programming exercise design things like that so you can go oh okay i can relate to that maybe i should back off of this or add more yeah. of that the, the big problem and this has done a huge disservice to people who work out is the view of workouts uh in the following way mm -hmm. does it make me sweat does it make me sore is it hard mm -hmm. okay so if you want to sweat get sore and have a hard workout, programming doesn't matter. It literally does not matter. You could pick one movement and do it over and over again, and you would hit that criteria. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're looking at workouts from this perspective, am I going to elicit the favorable adaptations, the responses in my body that I want, then programming gets quite complicated. And there's lots of moving parts, everything from, of course, reps, sets, exercises, tempo. Um, and then that changes uh, the order of the exercises, of course, the days, how they follow each other. And and do I, do I continue this after three weeks or four weeks? Do I change the way I'm approaching my workouts? There's so many different moving parts. If you look at it from an adaptation standpoint, now it starts to look a lot more complicated. You just want to get sore and sweat. Well, it doesn't matter. Go to Beachbody. They got a lot of crappy programs. They'll do that for you. Now, I do think that there are some, some shade. There. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> I do feel like there are some things, though, that were like major, you know, paradigm shattering moments for each of us when it came to writing programs, either for ourselves or for clients. And that's why I brought up the 
the frequency and the volume, mm-hmm. the the exercise selection, like mm-hmm. those were big things. Like, I mean, I, I those are generally true, right? Right, for a lot of people. exactly. I mean, there's always exceptions to the rule. Yes, we should assess somebody and address any sort of imbalances, and of course, that's again, that's why there's professionals in this field. Right. But I do think there's like some really good nuggets that you can give to somebody that's asking, "Hey, I'm trying to write my first program. Mm-hmm. What are some of the do's and don'ts?" Well, one of the don'ts is like to your point, Sal. Don't just throw a bunch of exercises at your workout and gauge it based off of how hard it is. Mm. That doesn't necessarily mean you had a good workout just because it was difficult. There are specific exercises that are better than most, which are most the compound lifts. You should prioritize those. There is an ideal amount of frequency. So two to three times a week is for what most studies support as the best amount of frequency on the body parts. There is too much volume, meaning you can do too much of those body parts. So going beyond 15, 18, 20 sets per body part per week is probably more for mo- or too much for most most people, unless you're a hyper responder, you're on anabolic steroids. So there's some, I think, general rules that took me years of yeah. coaching to kind and of. And there's specificity. There's like, what, what's your true goal? Like, are you right. really just trying to work on strength? Then you got to adjust your rest periods. Right. Uh, you know, is it hypertrophy? Okay, now we got to like completely, our reps need to change to look at like this. And right. uh, so, you know, there's just things to consider that, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't think your average person knows. Right. And then to add to that, it, you know, no matter what you decide, your adaptation is after about four to six weeks of you following that and targeting that, it's time to move on and change right. things up or else almost anything is better than what you're currently you doing. You have a window. Yeah. 